Madam Genta, thank you so much for inviting Sebastian and myself into what I think we could consider the closest we can get to your late husband, Gerald Genta's place on Earth today, which is surrounded by many of his drawings and his designs. But we are here specifically to talk about one. Yes, absolutely. Which celebrates an important anniversary in 2022, which is the Royal Oak. I believe, and I know as, as an artist himself, he was very, very interested in art. His passion, he loved all art, but his passion was Picasso. It was always a great joy to him that this wonderful company called the Hourglass in Singapore called him the, the Picasso of timepieces. He was very proud to be Swiss, and he said, we are the watchmakers of the world. I think Gerard was Gerard because he was Italian as well. He was a leader, he didn't lead by force. He led by crazy inspiration. Did Gerald sketch? Was he always drawing? Always. Always. Always drawing. Every single watch he's ever designed, he did a circle with his compass, and then with the ruler, a line like this, and a line like this. And then he would take his little paint brushes and paint. The watch came straight away. And did he happen to redraw it or to retouch it? No, no, no. He, if, he, if he didn't, wasn't pleased with it, he would start a whole new one. So he would travel with his paint box? Oh, absolutely. He painted as a watchmaker doing his watches. He started drawing watches and then he would get into his car, he lived in Geneva in those days, and would go to every watch factory, whether it was like Cotofe, Bienne, uh, Brassus, La Chaux de Fonds, all of them. The relationship with Audemars Piguet appears to be different. To him, Audemars Piguet had the best name, the best legitimacy to become not a big brand, to become a beautiful brand. There's big brands and there's beautiful brands. He had also a very strong relationship with uh, Georges Gaulet. Oh, yes. That was to him somebody, I think that was to him somebody who has mattered very much in his life. Mr. Gaulet totally understood Gerald's, um, what was Gerald was trying to do. I think they were the perfect match. Uh, a great gentleman with a vision for Audemars Piguet. A brave gentleman because to go to sport steel watch for a company that was very traditional as the Piguet and the best designer in the world. Apparently, Gerard told me that the brief was the most expensive sports watch in steel in the world. And as all accounts show, he was given very little time to conjure. Very little time, but that wouldn't have phased him, you know. To him, that was business as usual. So what everyone considered incredible and unusual to do it in one night was normal. Your husband took a very great part into the development of the Rayelo. Yes, I think he felt that he, this was um, some, a very, very important watch because remember he had designed many watches for many brands before and um, had helped but not followed them through like this one and he went to every part of the manufacturing process, whether it was the bracelet, which is very special and needs to be really uh, perfect in its sizing, or whether it was the dial at Stern, in which there were so many operations on it. What was his favorite element of the Royal Light? Was it the bracelet? Was it the tapered, faceted bracelet design? Or was it the incorporation of his favorite octagon shape? Or Probably the octagon shape. Yeah, the octagon shape kept coming back. He thought, it was the perfect circle with just the right amount of angles. Gérald Jonta started his career at the dawn of the quartz uh, technology. Gerald um, felt very responsible to bring back the mechanical watch. And I think the complication helped a lot because it, there wasn't going to be a quartz complication, was there? The Rylock, in a way, played also this role. I mean, it's a thinner, self-winding uh, mechanical movement. 
inside a futuristic case that is really looking toward the future. I agree with you completely. I agree with you completely. And I think this stays in the, in the world we live in now. I think he would be proud today to see how it's still uh, going strongly. I think he would have taken a view that it will be an icon for many, many years. I think that was it. But he was not somebody who looked back. He would tell you, I don't care, I'm looking forward. Mm -hmm.